Data on the coordinates of the image of point P, if P is rotated about the origin through 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. Here we go. So that is 5.1. In order to understand 5.1, I need to demonstrate a few things. So let's take a look at this Cartesian plane. We have our X, well, our Y, uh, and then we have our X. So let me show you something. Let's say that uh, this is our point running, it's a line from the origin, and then we have our point somewhere here. And then this point is a point A of coordinates. Let me just write the coordinates of coordinates. The coordinate, the y coordinate is easy to see that it's going to be zero, right? So let's say x is two and y is zero. So let's rotate this point 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So if we do that, that point is going to be somewhere here, right? That point is going to be somewhere here. Um, and then the coordinates will change. We'll no longer have an X value, which is two and a Y value, which is zero. We would actually have a Y value, which is two and an X value, which is zero. That should be easy to see. But let's rotate this point one more time. So we are rotating this point 90 degrees and the clockwise one more time. I want to demonstrate something. This is the last rotation. So let's just do that. So if we rotate it again, uh, take a look. And uh, now the Y value is back to zero, but the X value is now minus two. And then you can sort of guess what's going to happen when we rotate it again, 90 degrees anti-clockwise. We're going to get the X value being zero and the Y value being minus two. Okay, so the point P which you are dealing with has coordinates two and square root of three, right? So it is somewhere here in the first quadrant. It is somewhere in the first quadrant. So this is, well, I want to use a different color. Uh, this is, let me use green, right? So this is um, P, P somewhere here, right? Uh, maybe let me erase that there. Okay, so this is P. Uh, P as coordinates two and square root of three. Okay, so if we rotate it 90, degree, uh, 90 degrees anti-clockwise, then it's gonna end up somewhere here, right? Because uh, we need an angle of 90 degrees there, right? So if we rotate it 90 degrees, it's going to end up here. So how will then the coordinates of X and Y look like when we rotate it 90 degrees? Let's take a look at the trend. Here we had 0 and 2, right? We had X and Y, and then they changed to become... In place of X, we had Y. And in place of Y, we had um, X, but Y was now negative. So the same thing is going to happen here. We have P, but when we rotate P 90 uh, degrees anti-clockwise, now the X and Y are going to change. The X is going to be square root of 3, and the Y is going to be 2. But X is now on the second quadrant, right? X is now on the second quadrant. And we know that on the second quadrant, X will be negative. So there we go. We're going to have minus square root of 3 for the X value and 2 for the Y value. So this is how this rotation looks like, right? 90 degrees and clockwise. Okay, uh, that is 5.1. Let's take a look at 5.2. So 5.2. The graph of h of x is equal to a to the power x. Um, all right, we have the sketch and we have a point a on the graph. And then 5.2.1 says substantiate y the coordinates of q, the y intercept of h are 0 and 1. So we have q here is the y intercept. So y intercept x is equal to 
0 and y is unknown but they're saying that y is equals to 1 and we're supposed to give a reason why that is so so take a look at the at h of x h of x is equals to a to the power x any number to the power 0 is not 1 right we usually say that any number to the power 0 is 1 but that number has to be a special number it has to be non zero 0 to the power 0 is not 1 you can put it in your calculator you're going to get something that is not 1 so any number to the power 0 is 1 but you know given that that number is not 0 so we can see that for any value of a if x is 0 if x is 0 we're going to get one right given that a is not equal to zero if a is equal to zero we, we don't get one some issues are going to arise we actually get undefined if a is equal to zero right so that is uh 5.2.1 let's take a look at 5.2.2 right calculate the value of a so h of x is equal to a to the power x it's one of those questions right we are given the coordinate a right uh, capital letter a of which the x is minus one and the y is a half so we can just substitute this point and find a so y is one over two this is equal to a to the minus one a to the minus one um we can write uh, a to the minus one as one divided by a right so it should be easy to see that a is equal to two right if those two things are equal to each other then a should be equal to two um that is 5.2.2 let's take a look at 5.2.3 right on the equation of the inverse of uh, of the inverse function h inverse in the form y is equal to so we know that h of x is equal to 2 to the power x so the first step we swap x and y we swap x and y so if we do that in place of y well let me say first y is equal to 2 to the power x in place of y we put x and in place of x we put y obviously we need to introduce log on both sides so that we can bring y down okay uh, if we do that we're gonna get y log of q so y is equal to log of x divided by log of 2 so y is equal to log of x base 2 there we go that is the equation of the inverse function in the form y is equals to let's take a look at 5.2.4 so 5.2.4 is supposed to draw a sketch of f inverse and indicate the coordinates of two points that lie on this graph okay so y is equals to log of x base 2 uh well what do we need we need uh the intercept right uh let's try and find the x intercept will let y be equals to zero so x intercept uh y is equals to zero and then we have log of x base two so two will carry zero right so two to the power zero is equals to x because two is not zero x will be equals to one so one is equals to x so the coordinates of our x intercept x is equals to one y is equals to zero right uh, can we find the y intercept well at least we can try y intercept x is equals to zero so let's see y is equals to log of zero base two i think log of zero is undefined yes log of zero is undefined so we don't have a y intercept here per se okay so we can forget about that and then let's just uh, take a look at the function and see where it is defined right so we cannot have a log of a negative number right uh, so the function cannot go to negative x values right values of x cannot be negative here in our case 
Yeah, because we cannot have log of negative numbers and we cannot have log of zero. So the function shall not touch zero also. So what are we going to have? Let's take a look. And so now we have one point, which is the X intercept. Now we have the X intercept, which is one and zero. But take a look at this uh, function that we're given H of X. We have the point A. So we can find a prime, right? Which lies on the even in the in on the inverse. Like we've said before, uh, if a point on the function itself is x y on the inverse is going to be y x in that function. So in place of x we can have a half here, and in place of y we can have minus one. So these are the two points that we can sketch on the function um, h inverse. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this is our y, this is our x. So we can start with um, the x-intercept. x-intercept is right here, right? Um, we have 1 there and 0, therefore. And then we need the point A. The point A is minus... Oh, well, I have for the x value and the minus 1 for the y. So if we have 1 here, then we're seeing that uh, the point A shall be somewhere here, right? Uh, between 1 and 0 for the x value so that it is a half. So we then have to sketch f inverse. H inverse will look like the following. There we go. So that that is f inverse. Well, it does not look as clean as I would like it to look, but uh, yeah, we are expecting uh, something like that. It's just too straight here for my liking, but it's fine. You know, um, it's a sketch, right? It's a sketch. Uh, that is 5.2.4. Uh, let's take a look at 5.2.5. .5. So 5.2.5, .5, read off from your graph the values of x for which... Uh, log of x base 2 is greater than minus 1. Well, our graph is not on a graph paper, so we cannot precisely read off uh, values from the graph, but we can just solve it algebraically. So look at this. This is h inverse. That is h inverse, essentially. Okay, so x is greater than 2 to the minus 1, because 2 can carry this minus 1 so that we can drop the log, right? So 2 to the minus 1 is 1 over 2. So x is greater than 1 over 2. That is the values of x for which h inverse is greater than minus 1. Oh, okay, I see now. It will be easy to see from the graph, even if we're not using a graph paper. Yeah, because this point here, this point here has coordinates, has coordinates a half for the x value and minus one for the y value so right it should be easy to see either way it should be easy to see but there we go 5.2.5 let's go to 5.2.6 so 5.2.6 if g of x is equals to 100 multiplied by 3 to the power x determine the velocity of x for which h of x is equals to g of x oh well h of x is equal to a to the power x a is 2 so that's 2 to the power x so we are looking for values of x for which these two things are equal to each other for at which 100 multiplied by 3 to the x is equal to 2 to the x hmm okay let's put uh, the variables on one side so let's divide here by 3 to the x and divide here by 3 to the x so 100 is equal to right 2 to the x divided by 3 to the x but we can use exponential loss there we can use exponential loss and write that as well 2 over 3 everything to the power x is equal to 100 right and then x is to the power there so uh can we write 100 with a base of 2 over 3 maybe we can but to be a painful exercise, instead, we can just introduce log on both sides. You can introduce log on both sides. 
yeah when we introduce log on both sides we take the x down so x will be equals to log of 100 divided by log of 2 over 3 so x should be equals to minus 11.36 right that is the value of x for which g of x and h of x are going to be equals to each other right 5.3 5.3 and uh, the price p in rands per unit right so p is the price in rands per unit of each item in a consignment of q items is given by p is equals to log of 10 plus q over 2 then 5.3.1 says calculate the value of p and the total price of the consignment when the consignment has 100 1980 items so okay the value of p let's start with the value of p first p is equals to log of 10 plus q over 2. so in order for us to find the value of p we can just replace q with 1980 and we divide that by 2. so when i put that in my calculator i get p is equals to 3. right so we've addressed this part calculate the value of p p is the price um per unit in rands all right rands per unit there we go and now we need the total price for the consignment now we need the total price for the consignment so uh the total price will be close to the number of items which is 1980 multiplied by the price of one item right so p don't forget p is just the price of one item okay so 1980 multiplied by three this is equal to 5940 right so that is the total price of that consignment uh 5.3.1 so 5.3.2 determine the number of items in the consignment when the price of each item is children okay so we still have p being equals to log of 10 plus q over 2 we're looking for the number of items when p is equal to 2 the price per item so we have log of 10 plus q over 2 there we go so in order to drop the log we need to take uh, both sides to like we need a base of 10 so let me show you something let's say x is equal to a log of y right so we know that here we have a base of 10 so what would we do we would say that the 10 would carry the x so we would have 10 to the x being equal to y so we are applying the same idea here we are having 10 to the 2 being equal to 10 plus q over 2 right so 10 to the 2 so 10 to the 2 that is 100 so i have 100 being equals to 10 plus q over 2 if we take it to the other side uh we're gonna get 90 being equals to q over 2 cross multiply q is equals to 180 there we land